Good morning, friends. I am Dr. Rajamay. Good morning, friends. Happy to be a part of uh, Procure 2022. Uh, sorry, I am unable to attend the conference uh, directly uh, due to short notice. So, I am uh, making a video on the anatomy of rectum and anus and I am going to explain it. So, brief introduction I am Dr. Rajamayendran, uh, director and founder of RM Gastro Hospital. And I have completed my MCH Surgical Gastroenterology from Madras Medical College and I am a consultant surgical gastroenterologist and lab surgeon in Tamil Nadu. So I have authored more than 10 books and these are some of my books. So without wasting time let me enter into the discussion of the rectum and anus in detail. Now let me discuss the basic aspects of anatomy related to rectum and anus. So please understand so let us start with the rectum. So rectum is around 12 to 15 centimeter in length. So rectum is identified during colonoscopy by the presence of these folds you can see there are totally three folds these are known as Houston valves okay these folds of rectum are known as Houston valves please remember it is upper middle and lower so the middle valve is present to the right side of the rectum upper and lower are in the left side so these folds when I'm going to mobilize during the cancer rectum surgery I will get an additional length from 15 centimeter I will get a length up to 20 centimeter so I will get an additional length of 5 centimeter by doing a dissection of the rectum so this is very important point please remember Houston valves help us to identify the rectum during colonoscopy and it is three valves uh, the right valve is in the middle and the left valves are in the upper and lower part of the rectum so rectum has absence of some important stu structures or uh, during surgery we can see there is no tinea coli please remember there is no tinea coli in rectum there is no appendices epiploike in rectum so appendices epiploike are absent in rectum so tinea coli appendices epiploike they are all absent in rectum and you have to understand rectum is not fully intraperitoneal so i can now divide the rectum into three parts like upper part middle part and lower part so upper middle and lower i can divide the rectum into 4 centimeter 4 centimeter 4 centimeter so please understand the upper rectum is fully intraperitoneal like this so like this this is a upper rectum which is seen fully intraperitoneal like this so it is seen inside the abdominal cavity during surgery i can see the upper rectum Whereas middle rectum is only anterior part is intraperitoneal. So this is a middle rectum. This is upper rectum. The middle part, only the middle part is intraperitoneal. So then the lower rectum is fully extraperitoneal. It's fully extraperitoneal organ. So please remember. So that is this is based on this only we divide the anti resection into various uh, types. Like for example, if you do an anti resection outside the peritoneal reflection at this level, it is known as a low anterior resection so please remember anterior resection done below the peritoneal reflection is known as low anterior resection above the peritoneal reflection if you do an anterior resection it is known as anterior resection we don't call it as high anterior resection but we call it as anterior resection when it is done above the peritoneal reflection when it is done below the peritoneal reflection it is known as low anterior resection okay this is very important point you will be learning them in the upcoming sessions so please remember upper rectum is fully intraperitoneal middle rectum anterior part is intraperitoneal very important basic points so now what are the other issues you should know from rectal anatomy i'm going to tell you now so rectum is like this okay rectum is like this so rectum is ending at the level of a very important muscle attached known as puborectalis muscle so please remember there is a muscle attached to the rectum, uh, the, sorry, encircling the rectum at the level of anorectal junction. So this muscle is attached to the pubic symphysis. So this is attached to the pubic symphysis and it is encircling the rectum like a uh, ring, okay, like a ring. Therefore, it is known as puborectalis ring. 
so very important muscle with related to continence and below that we have the anal canal okay we have the anal canal below this so please understand this image i'm going to just make every muscle in this one image so this is a puborectalis muscle which is seen at exactly at anorectal junction okay this is rectum this is anus in anus you have to know this is a very important line you all know very well that is known as pectinate line or dentate line pectinate or dentate line what is the importance of this line means you should know this line this line is a very important line above this line it is lined by columnar epithelium okay that is lined by columnar epithelium the mucosa above the dentate line is made up of columnar epithelium below it is made up of squamous epithelium okay there are squamous epithelium even in the squamous epithelium though not important for surgeons we have two types of squamous epithelium so one is non keratinized squamous epithelium this is non keratinized and this is keratinized keratinized means they have hair non keratinized means they don't have hair this line is known as white line of hilton this line is known as white line of hilton so actually anatomically we can divide the anal canal into three parts the outer part which is containing hair known as keratinized squamous epithelium inner part containing non keratinized epithelium with no hair above that is a squamous epithelium sorry the columnar epithelium above the dentate line is a columnar epithelium having columns of mergagni it is around 6 to 10 columns are there columns of mergagni or they are known as columns of mergagni so please remember these columns contains glands opening of the glands the anal glands open into this columns of mergagni these glands are going to produce secretion for the lubrication of the stools so very important these glands therefore can get obstructed and they can get infected and they are going to cause the major problem known as perianal abscess which can rupture out and it can cause fistulas so that is going to rupture out and it can cause fistulas so very important anatomy please understand the classical anatomy of rectum and anus rectum is 12 to 15 centimeter anus is only 4 centimeter anus is divided into a columnar epithelium and a squamous epithelium inner columnar outer squamous epithelium so the cancer arising from the anal canal may be squamous cell cancer or it can be adeno cancer both can happen in anus so now let me tell you the other muscles around the anus from the same picture let me tell you the other muscles of anus so please understand the anatomy very clearly then only you can understand the various diseases you are going to discuss soon so this is the next important muscle which is nothing but internal sphincter muscle please understand this is an internal sphincter muscle what is internal sphincter muscle so internal sphincter around the anus is a very important muscle because it is the very important muscle for resting pressure of anus this keeps the anus always closed it keeps the anus always closed at a resting pressure of around 60 millimeters mercury the anus is closed by this internal sphincter it is not under voluntary control it is involuntary what is this it is nothing but the continuation of the circular muscle of rectum please remember it is a continuation of not the longitudinal muscle it is a continuation of the circular muscle of rectum downward downwards encircling the anus like a cylinder it is encircling the anus like a cylinder it is known as internal sphincter outside the internal sphincter we have the important muscle that is external sphincter which is made up of three parts we are made it is made up of three parts like this so it is made up of three parts of external sphincter which are uh, derived from the various extrinsic muscles so these muscles are under voluntary control external sphincter is under voluntary control and they decide the squeeze pressure please remember they decide the squeeze pressure what is squeeze pressure so the pressure which prevents the motion or flatus coming out so it can be done voluntarily you can contract the external sphincter voluntarily and prevent the motion or phases coming out but the point is internal sphincter can be contracted for long time but external sphincter you cannot contract for long time you can maximum contract it only for 60 seconds so external sphincter can be contracted voluntarily only for 60 seconds please don't forget this point okay and this is the anal canal uh, anatomy this is a buttock 
and this is the ischiorectal pad of fat so please remember this is the ischiorectal pad of fat seen and on the side we have the iliac bones so these are the bones so now you should know what are the diseases going to happen in the anus means the diseases which are going to happen the most important disease is hemorrhoids which are arising from the columnar epithelium they are nothing but the prolapsed anal cushions so hemorrhoids are nothing but the prolapsed anal cushions which are going to descend down as the patient is going to have constipation and give so much of pressure during motion the hemorrhoidal cushions are normal anal cushions comes out that is hemorrhoids so you know very well above the dentate line it is painless therefore grade 1 and grade 2 hemorrhoids are painless and in the lower part of the anus that is the squamous epithelium you have that get a tear the tear is therefore fissure which is painful which is very painful because it is seen in the squamous part which is supplied by uh, various nerves which can cause pain so this is very important thing you should not forget fissure can happen here so i told you about the fistulas fistula is nothing but a extension of a perianal abscess from the anal columns of morgagni perianal abscess happens and it ruptures outside it is known as fistula when it sit ruptures outside it is known as fistula so you will be discussing the various types of fistula that which is coming between the two sphincters is intersphincteric fistula coming through the two sphincters is known as transsphincteric fistula the fistula which is extending from above downwards like this is known as suprasphincteric fistula and we have the levator ani muscle here holding the rectum from preventing the prolapse so levator ani so this fistula which is coming like this above the levator ani is known as extra levator fistula so various fistulas we get in this plane so suprasphincteric extra levator transsphincteric intersphincteric so all these are various fistulas you get in based on the anatomy of the anus so please remember these four fistulas are nothing but the four fistulas as per parks classification so you should not forget these type of uh, anatomy and the disease which you are going to get so let me now discuss the most important anatomy for surgeons that is the facial anatomy the anatomy related to the fascia around the rectum so this is a sacral bone sorry because of the restricted time for me given is only 15 minutes i am going little fast um, so this is the bladder so now i am going to show you the rectum so this is a rectum okay please understand this is a rectum and this is anus okay now this is anus now you should know the fascias which are present while dis dissecting the rectum for various surgeries so the fascia which is very closely seen on the rectum all around is known as fascia propria so this is a derivative from endopelvic fascia known as fascia propria this is the fascia which is encircling the rectum fascia propria is encircling the rectum completely including the mesorectum including the mesorectum i am going to discuss later is encircled like this and this is the very important fascia you should not forget this is known as presacral fascia please don't forget this is presacral fascia which is containing all the presacral plexus of veins underneath so if you open the presacral fascia there is going to be a torrential bleed so please remember presacral fascia so the presacral fascia is very closely attached with the fascia propria at the level of s4 please remember at the level of s4 the presacral fascia is very closely attached to the fascia propria known as what is that name it is known as uh, valdeus fascia valdeus fascia that is known as valdeus fascia also known as recto and sacral recto sacral fascia so this is a very important fascia i will tell you what is the importance in this so this is rect valdeus fascia recto sacral fascia so what is the fascia seen anteriorly so anteriorly we have a fascia which is covering the bladder area and prostate so this is a fascia which will have which we can see the seminal vesicles all those things we have a fascia here this is very important fascia denon villus fascia so denon villus fascia is seen anteriorly so now you should know in a cancer rectum operation what is the plane we have to go for dissection so please remember the posterior holy plane is 
between the fascia propria and the presacral fascia we can go blindly up to valdez fascia even with a blunt instrument by hand or with a gauze we can simply go up to the valdez fascia but at the time of valdez fascia we should not do blunt dissection we should take a scissor or a diathermy and cut this fascia if you do it blindly you can see in this picture it will lift the presacral fascia and there will be bleeding happens so this is the place where you should take the scissor we have to take the scissor should be taken or sharp instruments are taken so moment you cut this you will enter into a deep retro ret, ret, retro rectal space that space will lead you to the coccyx after that there will be no bleeding okay so once you enter the retro sacral space we can easily proceed for apr or for ultra low anti resection is easy on the posterior plane anteriorly what is the plane for cancer rectum so please remember you should not get confused anteriorly we should include the denon villus fascia into the specimen so we have to go in this plane we should see the seminal vesicle while dissecting so please remember you should see the seminal vesicles prominently you will see the seminal vesicle while dissecting it is the plane is this anterior to denon villus fascia when you are doing a rectal prolapse or any other benign disease we can go in the plane between denon villus and fascia propria but in cancer cases we should include denon villus fascia to the specimen so the plane of dissection anteriorly and posteriorly are very important while doing a cancer surgery posteriorly we should go between fascia propria and presacral fascia anteriorly you should include the denon villus fascia into the specimen so then i'm here and then i'm telling you mesorectum what is this mesorectum mesorectum is nothing but for example for an in a colon we have a meso colon no the same thing is for a rectum we have a mesorectum where is the mesorectum seen in the rectum that's a very important point the mesorectum is seen mostly posteriorly please remember it is seen mostly attached posteriorly and very less laterally and it is totally absent anteriorly mesorectum is more present posteriorly this is the mesorectum which is going to have all the nodes please remember the rectal cancer nodes are all seen in the mesorectum so we should include the mesorectum for upper rectal cancers i should cut up to 5 cm the mesorectum for middle and lower rectal cancers i should do total mesorectal excision i should completely remove the mesorectum i should do a total mesorectal excision please don't forget this this is a very important point you should not forget for your exams total mesorectal excision needed for middle and lower rectum upper rectum 5 cm we have to go and cut at this level like this so this is very important mesorectum is seen posteriorly and on the laterally very less on the anterior part so now you let us know about the various vessels various vessels or blood vessels supplying the rectum so in this picture you please see there are three important arteries which are going to give two branches one is superior rectal artery this is a superior rectal artery coming from a branch of in end branch of ima okay it is a end branch of inferior mesenteric artery which is going to give superior rectal artery which is dividing into two branches as shown in the image middle rectal artery is a branch of internal iliac artery as shown here internal iliac artery divides into two middle rectal arteries inferior rectal artery is a branch of internal pudendal artery so totally we have six arteries supplying around the rectum and it is going to the anus so we have totally three arteries so coming to the veins so we have superior rectal veins which drains the upper two third of rectum superior rectal veins so you can see this is a superior rectal vein which drains upper two third of rectum and which is going to enter the the superior rectal veins are going to enter the inferior mesenteric vein which will enter into the portal system whereas lower rectum and anus drains into middle rectal vein and inferior rectal vein which are connected to the internal iliac vein in the systemic circulation so there is an interesting point if you see superior rectal vein drains into the portal system the inferior rectal vein and the middle rectal vein are going to drain into the internal iliac vein which is going to join the systemic circulation so this explains the reason why the cancers in the upper rectum will go to more of liver as meds liver meds upper rectal cancer produces more of liver meds liver meds whereas middle and lower rectum produces more of lung meds so this is a point from sabiston 21st edition so upper rectal cancers produces more of liver meds middle rectum and lower rectum produces meds towards internal iliac vein carrying the meds to the lung systemic meds are more common in a lower rectum 
So similarly, lymph node drainage, upper two third rectum drains to the inferior mesenteric nodes and parietic nodes. The lower third of rectum drains in two directions. Cephalate it drains into inferior mesenteric nodes and inferiorly into internal iliac nodes. And please remember below the dentate line, the lymph node will drain into the inguinal nodes only. It will drain into the inguinal nodes. So that is why anal cancers will always examine for inguinal nodes. And most important in the last part of the anatomy, I want to explain you about the nerve plexus seen in the rectal and anal surgeries. So please understand this is a superior hypogastric plexus. So this is a superior hypogastric plexus. It is also known as presacral plexus. Please don't forget there are two names. Superior hypogastric plexus or presacral plexus are very closely related to the inferior mesenteric artery. You should note here very closely this image. In those days we used to do high ligation of IMA for a complete clearance. We used to do high ligation of IMA. What problem happened? So that concept is no more used because when I'm going for a high ligation of IMA, the superior hypogastric plexus can get injured. The superior hypogastric plexus carries sympathetic nervous system. Please remember, they carry sympathetic nervous system. So if the sympathetic nervous system is injured, you know very well what problem can happen. The patients may develop retrograde ejaculation can develop. So retrograde ejaculation will happen because of the sympathetic damage of hypogastric plexus. So superior hypogastric plexus injury can be prevented by avoiding high ligation of IMA and we are ligating nowadays distally very close to the origin of left colic artery we are now uh, ligating at this place okay. So we are not ligating at the origin. This is first important point. Please remember superior hypogastric plexus gives the hypogastric nerve. So that is you can very well see during surgery from the hypogastric plexus you can see two hypogastric left and right descending down. So you have to preserve carefully the hypogastric nerves to prevent the retrograde ejaculation. Another important plexus is inferior hypogastric plexus also known as pelvic plexus. Please remember that is also known as pelvic plexus. This contains both the sympathetic as well as parasympathetic nerves. These plexus can be injured when we are dissecting in the lower part very far away from the rectum. When you go close to the pelvic wall, this can be injured. How to avoid injury to the pelvic plexus is to co go close to the rectum. Go as close to the rectum. Don't go away from the rectum. Go as close to the rectum. You will not injure the pelvic plexus. Please remember this is a very important point. So what? how to prevent a superior hypogastric plexus injury is to ligate away from the origin of IMA. How to prevent pelvic plexus injury is to go close to the rectum. Don't go laterally. So what are the problems going to happen? Superior hypogastric presacral plexus injury can cause retrograde ejaculation and bladder dysfunction. So they are purely sympathetic nerves. Similarly, inferior hypogastric plexus can cause atonic bladder and impotence can happen in those cases. Okay, very important. Please don't forget this is related to plexus injuries. So I think this is enough for the anatomy because you are going to discuss in detail the various topics uh, in the upcoming sessions. So thank you all for inviting me. I thank the organizers for inviting me for this lecture. So uh, hoping to see you all soon in the next session in a live class. Thank you.